up. All right. All right, and you have to give me uh, clearance to screen share as well, apparently. Dang. All right. Uh, you're going to have the host responsibilities. Deal. Um, and so you'll have to admit some people if they come in late, unfortunately. Let me. Okay. Just let me know when people pop up or someone says anything. Okay. Screen share. You guys see that? Yep. Good. So, um, so obviously we're talking about attacking deep space today. Um it's one thing that uh, last season uh, we had really highs and really lows, uh, depending on the tournament we went to and depending on the team that we played. Um, it's just something that we definitely need to uh, know how to do more consistently. Um, and specifically in avert, since we are switching our offense, uh, we're going to have to uh, kind of work with each other on communication. Um, and how to best do that going forward um, this next season. So um, what are we looking at? Um, some key points I'm gonna hit today, clearing deep space, uh, timing, team cutting, decisive choices, keeping angles open for the thrower, um, and then some misdirection as well. Um, I'm kind of gonna dive into each of uh, these key points um, with a little video. Um, just so that we can have, kind of have a visual. Uh, but when I think of uh, how I try to attack deep space and how I've seen people that have played much longer than me and are way more efficient at it, uh, these are kind of the points that uh, I felt like kept replicating over and over and over. Um, so that's what we're going to look at today. So first and foremost, clearing deep space. Uh, if you guys don't know, that's Derek. <laughs> um, he just brightens my day, so I put him there. Um, but, <laughs> um, anyway, um, so it's important to finish deep cuts uh, with a hard clear uh, to open up for others. Um, I feel like we all know that, but it's harder. Uh, it's easier said than done, I guess, um, especially when you put in the fact that uh, you can get tired out there, um, especially if you're one of the main cutters. Um, and so uh, what we have to just remember, especially in avert, is since we are basically in obviously a vertical line in the middle of the field, if we don't clear that deep space, they can just poach over the top. Uh, your guy can literally just leave you. Um, and so it's just really important to finish deep cuts. I'm going to kind of show you uh, just a quick little blurb of uh, someone actually clearing out of the deep space really, really well. Um, and it's decisive. It's, it's not a thought, it's just in their system. Um, this is also something that's gonna be shown um, when, give me just a second here while I get this up for you. Share. Yeah. All right. Can you guys see that or no? Like just my desktop? Yeah, we're looking at it. So yeah, you just see the set folder. You know? All right. So uh, this is Sub Zero versus Sockeye. Um, Sub Zero runs a lot of vert, um, or at least they did. Um, so this is just a qu quick clear cut that I'm about to show you. Um, but uh, again, like I said before, uh, it's just des done decisively. It doesn't mess up their offense. Uh, their defender is not able to just poach over top. 
Um, this is also going to be shown in our ulti place, uh, which uh, the captains have planned on releasing here in the next like, week or two. I'm kind of cleaning up some stuff, um, but it'll kind of show just the flows of our offense, pull plays, and things like that. Um, but just a second. But here. I'm sure he's more concerned about when you guys see that. Second uh, if you can see the guy in the back that goes deep here. He yeah. comes straight under on the break side. So, he's, he's um, so as the disc got swung, and I'll come back and do it again right here. Correct. As the disc gets swung but I'm sure to the middle of the field, he comes back down game. on the break Second side title, for that potential break look and to get his defender outside so and he's, recommitted. He's Except for international play. Show right. one more time here. He's in. But I'm sure he's more concerned about winning what I believe in his second title, even one in college or two. Or he never won in college. Never won. So he's he's never won. It's just re-engaging your defender. Um, so again, he can't just poach off of you um, and basically clog up that deep space for everyone else. Uh, we got to make sure that if we're working hard on offense, uh, the other team has to work hard on defense as well. Um, so that's just quick clearing deep space. That's pretty elementary. Um, anyone have anything for that? Anything to add? I know Stu loves to talk. Yeah, I'll talk. Uh, I thought it was also a good clear because he could, like with the timing of the swing and the way he like had made the decision, like he recognized that that guy was swinging the disc and he made his decision to clear to the break side because that's like the next open lane. Like they, they yeah. could have had like a 20 yard gainer on the break side if that guy like just like whipped a backhand out there, but right, like it's his defender look. had to go. Like he couldn't just let him like he can, he couldn't cast him out. He had to stay, you know, reeled up on Absolutely. him because it was like a threatening spot. Yeah. And one thing um, just to add to that, if you guys don't mind, it's just like as he's cutting, you know, he's, and as Stu said this, but I think, you know, just to specifically point this out, he had his eyes back on his handler. Like if you're just cutting, cause you're just trying to run, that's not going to work very well. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping your hips open to the throw um, throughout your cuts um, and your head on a swivel um, is always going to make your cuts more viable um, and your clears a little more dangerous as well. So um, the next timing of cuts, um, we don't want to have a situation like this, as you can see in the picture, uh, knowing when it's your turn and clear that up. Um, that was on so, yeah. Hey, guess what? I take things out of context. So it's funny for me. Um, but anyway, timing of cuts, uh, Stu kind of talked about this earlier. Um, but on that clear, that guy's timing was really good for, for that swing of the disc. He timed even the clear to the swing of the disc. Uh, that timing is all about seeing the whole field. Um, if you're that back of the stack or the four or five, uh, anywhere in the stack, you should be acknowledging everyone on the field um, and everything's in front of you at that point. Um, so you should be able to time uh, your cuts pretty well. Uh, I was always taught uh, time your cuts on claps um, or, uh, and now what I think is uh, time your cuts when you know uh, swing's going to happen when you know someone's going to get power position, things like that. Um, so this next one that I'm going to bring up here, you guys can see this, correct? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, so what we're going to look at here, um, it's the same game, um, but we're just looking at like the movement of the deep space. Um, and then the countering on each side of the disc um, and how it's swung immediately when the counter's uh, under as well. So. Yeah, you got to mute, Rose. <laughs> Rose just wants to join in. Sorry, y'all. I just joined on my phone. My bad. <laughs> You're fine. All right. Unaffiliated completely until they came to talk. Yeah, not not even Northwest players. I mean, there are so some other players. Pretty like, shortly like, after the the, the poll, so we'll just watch child, it. Garrett Martin, Utah State. Yeah, but so pretty good poll here. Who's been drawn to Seattle? 
Jane Carnegie and Ben Katz. Now on this D-line, Katz getting ready to mark. Two more examples. East Coast Imports for Seattle. Bit of a different story. This guy gets the under. They're pushing up. He goes deep. Oz and it's an immediate open. For um, so drops in. that's a little bit of knowing your teammates' strengths. Um, obviously, they played together for a while. Um, if you're uh, aware of who those two are, they have played together for a while. But timing's huge here. Um, when he gets this under on the fourth side, he makes a move and immediately goes deep because he knows – Oscar that Osgar has that throw. Deep for um, Drops in. It's not hesitation. Um, and Cousins. there's an no one trying to take his turn. Jacob Janet um, and Dylan Freechock. So everyone realizes in this play that they need to be patient in that stack. Because if someone else decided, hey, I want to be that deep, it would just be clogged. Bit of a different story for Sun Zero's roster composition. I sold and gone. Oscar. Hey, Zay, I want to add something here because this is a very Stop textbook saving. play. Yeah. Um, this whole sequence right here is very unique because of where the handler, the off handler starts this point. Um, if you can just go on a freeze frame to that, I think this is the telling yeah. part because what. Uh, what Seattle Sakai is doing here is stopping that break. So you can see every single player on this field taking away that backhand side. And because that offhand mark guy is basically letting his defender take away the upfield, he's dropped back behind him on the break side for an easy swing around. And then number four right there realizes he can totally roast his guy on the break side. So this is, right. this is break side swing into break side upfield into forced backhand deep and totally right. messes up the defense here. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, obviously, these guys have the connection are able to recognize that stuff. But for realizing when that disc is in the air right now, you can see him looking at that disc. He knows it's his turn to cut because 21's not getting it. He's doing the four side cut. It's for his break side. So recognizing that is so important for this play. Right. Um, and as you can see, he recognized it immediately off that swing. Bit of a different story for Sub-Zero's roster composition. And then he's gone. Oscar. Looking deep for vote. So that's just a lot of timing. Um, obviously, at the beginning of that play, briefly, um, you kind of saw the clear uh, by that guy. He kind of made a, in my opinion, a weaker move in that lane. Uh, but even though he knew he was getting locked up, like he he made sure his guy was engaged with him when he cleared to the stack. Um, so that's something that I thought was really important. Um, making sure that you are clearing, even if your move's weak, even if you're tired. Uh, but the main thing on that play is that timing um, and just uh, being confident um, in your move as well. So uh, team cutting, um, communication um, between the stack uh, made this play that I'm going to show you just work, uh, trusting each other's skill sets. Uh, that's a big thing with practice. I'm a big practice guy. Um, I stress the importance of practice because it builds chemistry. Um, and when you know, just like that previous play, when you know someone has a certain throw, you're going to be way more confident making a cut for them um, because you know that that could actually go up. Um, so just trusting each other's skill sets, um, understanding uh, in the stack, who's that guy, who's that guy to go deep, not everyone's a deep threat. Some people are more of a, let me just grind unders all day. Um, so uh, this next clip here, just a second. Look, the all new 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. Nervous? Oh, Blaze brings back so many good memories. Remember our rep? His right own ring. <laughs> Take another look here. No, oh, give me just a second. I went too far. Long. Likewise, 
from Leandro Marks. Taylor catches it. Hayes drifts in for the mark as Taylor gets rid of it. All right, he's going to swing. See Rhino really overplaying. Defense and if you just watch the back, they communicate. This. Not yeah, I'm going to come back. Fun. Yes. Here we go. They did a little bit one. here because uh, it's really it's subtle. Really over... um, this guy, can you guys see my mouse? I don't know. Yeah, we can see it. Awesome. So this guy communicates to the back of the stack just by looking at him. And once he looks at this dude, uh, when they kind of settle here for a second, this guy immediately floods under. Uh, I'm assuming it's because his guy is just sitting over top of him and there's this guy in the lane and they're trying to just get him engaged. Uh, but it's just subtle communication. This guy is probably um, a little more of a threat deep consistently uh, than the guy that's at the back of the stack. Uh, but they just communicated that um, and it worked out for him. So if you just watch this guy real quick, uh, he's just going to glance at him real quick. So defense on any deep shots allowing some underneath ones but the disc not advancing too far but here we go they didn't overplay this one. and just a little com miscommunication by the defense makes that work uh again we're not always going to have to sky everybody uh cer certainly we're gonna have to make big plays every now and again um but just keeping your defender engaged and making them have to make decisions um this is just like textbook team cutting, um, make them make decisions on whether or not they're going to have to call for a switch, whether or not they're going to have to call for a bracket, uh, but making a decisive decision um, with your cutting teammate, which is that four and five. Um, so, and that's on that power position. Not advancing too far, but here we go. They did overplay that, this that freeze frame at, at 30 We're seconds was like perfect. Far. You could see the that? defender We're like. Yeah, we absolutely. Like you can see at right two thirty, if you had that free, like you could just see the guy was, like didn't know whether he was chasing this Taylor guy deep or if he had to like poach right. under. Like Rhino really overplaying and defense on this defense. next one. Like he claps and that guy is immediately going. Like on this clap, that's the importance of timing. Like you're making him decide immediately before this guy can even get over and flash. This guy's already going to put it because he's, he's cutting on that clap. Um, so that's, again, the importance of, of timing and communicating before that, that swing or that next under to get that power position comes um, so that the, the defense can't settle. Not advancing too far, but here we go. They didn't overplay this one. You want to talk about advancing far? So anyone have anything else they kind of want to say about that or on to the next? Yeah, I, I just want to say, like, that's the cut that we want to see. And if the defense doesn't fuck up, then it, we might not always get the throw just because the cut is actually that good. But if we can see that consistent consistently, we're going to catch them where they're not going to communicate the switch correctly or their last back isn't going to be able to you know, uh, have the right positioning to make that play, um, especially the way that he cut to, towards that break side so that the handler could put the flick going through the outside end lane, but towards that break side, there's just no way that anyone's catching up that space. Um, it allows for a little bit uh, of error from, from the handler too. Um, so like, there's just so much space there that that's a great look. It's not always going to be that great of a look, but if we cut consistently like that, we're going to see more of them than less. Right. Um, and a big thing is like, you mentioned the defense has to make a decision. Like in that play, there's a lot of times where the defense is almost going to concede that under instead. Um, like they're not always going to make the mistake to not cover that deep look or hesitate on that deep look. Sometimes they're going to just sit on that deep look and that under is free. Um, so that's something as well. That's the importance of that guy that went under. He, he went under hard. He went under like he wanted the disc because that's the real cut. Um, so it, it's not always going to be cutting for the deep space, even though this is obviously about the presentation, but um, that under is viable as well. So, all righty. So decisive choices. Um, just in the other clips I just showed you, 
Uh, again, there's no hesitation in what they're doing. Um, they're just cutting as hard as possible um, in their system. Uh, their system's uh, really oriented on timing. Um, so on those claps, on those swings, they're making a move um, and they're not hesitating on them either. Uh, there's communication while they're in the stack so that they don't have to guess who's next. Um, so again, partner cutting, uh, making a decision uh, with your partner uh, before uh, it's your time um, is gonna make that easier for all of us. And that's something that we're gonna have to practice as well, so. You gotta tell people that Liberty Mutual customized this car insurance, so you won't pay for what you need. Sheesh. You gotta do it Getting mad every time. Woo! New personal record, Lemu! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. disc they've got 20 seconds once that disc stops playing in the back too. oh hold on i'll tell you what we'll see our boy here for a second that was a great one that's our boy be starting Ian. Our i don't know if he's in here but on the receiving end is uh is rhino's signature puller in sweden although he opts to let that one hit out the back we will let cider Rhino made to, to set up some guys in the back of that end zone to help field that disc. They've got 20 seconds once that disc stops playing in the back. Too. So what I want us to realize on this is sometimes deep cuts are going to come from not just the back of the stack. Sometimes maybe a handler is going to wheel out. Sometimes uh, maybe like the one will wheel out. Um, it just kind of depends on uh, what we're doing, whether it's a pull play um, or uh, whether that one or that handler just feels like they have that matchup. Um, and so it's also recognizing, again, what's in front of you. Um, and so you're going to kind of see the guy in the back of the stack during this play um, is recognizing that someone is going to be cutting deep from in front of him. Um, so he's actually going to come under on this and allow – that deep state space not to be poached. Um, so I'll tell you what's the thrower. I do not like being rushed. This guy right here. Throw. And he comes under. Eli Freeman rushing towards the end zone. Davis chasing. But the convoy behind him can't. That um, so again, seconds once that disc stops playing in the back. This guy comes under. I'll tell you what's it's the a disc on like that clap. This guy makes a move. My first throw. And the back of the stack recognizes the he has some leverage and goes deep instead. But the convoy behind him can't make the play. Um, and I think that's going to be pretty important for us because we do have um, some people that might not be in that four and five position super often, uh, but can definitely make an impact uh, kind of wheeling deep and, and using someone that's maybe a hand lower, a weaker defender deep uh, to actually get that matchup. Uh, going deep for us. Um, so I'll kind of show that again, but just the recognition um, and that partner cutting, making a decisive decision of someone's cutting before me, even though it's my turn in the back, uh, but I need to cut under so that we can potentially get a look out of this. Unity uh, from Rafi Hayes. <laughs> Rhino may need to, to set up some guys in the back of that end zone to help field that disc. They've got 20 seconds once that disc stops playing in the back to bring it in. I'll tell you what, it's a thrower. I do not like being rushed before my first throw. Eli Freeman rushing towards the end zone. Davis chasing. And one thing I did write on this, um, one thing I did notice is that guy in the back of the stack on this, uh, he did hesitate just a little bit on whether or not he wanted to go under um, and it made that throw a little tighter of a window um, so for me uh, my rule has always been when i'm running a vert uh, less hesitation the better um, just make a move um, you don't need to keep dancing just make a move hey uh, isaiah press your initial move yeah go ahead yeah, I, I was just actually about to talk about that guy. I think um, 
what he did there, and maybe this was unintentional, like you're saying, maybe he hesitated, but if he was really high IQ there, what he might have seen is as that cut's developing, his guy is starting to maybe think about trying to help the deep, knowing that the uh, under is getting burned, or the guy who's underneath him, you know, is getting burned. So what he might have been doing there is actually like letting his guy, his teammate run past him so that he clears his level, knowing that his defender is off him now. And then he can take that easy free under, which, you know, he doesn't know at that point if the huck's up, maybe. Right. So yeah, like you, you'll see, I mean, it is like a throw into triple coverage, which is a really damn good throw. But he, you know, he would have had that free under. Then, and the other thing is, is like all these cuts, when we talk about decisiveness, it's like, they're all in straight lines. Like there's no banana cuts going on. So that's kind of another small side point. Yeah. Anyone else? Dope. All righty. Keeping angles open. Um, so that's one thing that uh, I know Bowles was talking about earlier in the presentation. Um, the guy that threw that uh, backhand um, across that stack. Um, that's the look that we're looking to do sometimes. Even that flick uh, that kind of arched across the stack. Um, that's really hard for a defender to catch up, let alone make a play on it. Um, so uh, keeping your hips open to the thrower, head on a swivel. Um, it doesn't just help with timing, um, but it helps uh, kind of let your thrower have a little more margin for error in that throw. Um, while still completing it. Um, so we got two here. Twelve words. Twelve words. Okay. We'll try. We'll see. This is up. For Simon Ellie. Sub, I keep harping on it, but that counter cut across the field as they move laterally to one side. You know, that's not the team that we're seeing right now. It's not a team that wants to grind it out. Sub Zero maybe lacking their identity. Charles Weinberg. You're going to see. It's over to the break side. It's going to go into Alley. this corner, I believe. Yeah. Now, Osgar with an away shot. Again. It's just across the stack, keeping your head on a swivel towards where that disc is so you can make cuts that that thrower wants to make. Um, so I think everyone knows Sub-Zero loves throwing across their stack. They love throwing blades. Um, and it's because, I mean, 70's not in a bad position to make a play here. Um, he's, in a, he's in a good defensive position. Um, that's just no. a really one – Good throw, but just a tough angle now, to play Oscar defense at. Um, so Simonelli, that's one thing that we're going to need uh, to kind of practice um, and Charles be willing Weinberg to do as well. Gets it over to the break side for Simonelli. Now, Osgar with an away shot. Uh, before I go on to the next one, anyone got anything on this? Yeah, cut for that. Yeah. I After agree. That for, I, me, for sure. I know Bowles loves that throw. Um, yesterday um, at Luda, uh, me, Nick, and Ty Rob were actually uh, talking about doing just that. Um, I know uh, in that conversation, Nick said that's something that he loves to throw. Uh, Ty Rob loves to throw stuff like that. Um, and we need to go towards our thrower strengths. Um, so if they love to throw something like that, they show us that they can throw something like that. Uh, we need to keep cutting for it. Um, and part of that um, is just communication with the eyes. Um, as you can see, give me just a second here. Let me get back to it. Andrew Roy centers up to Sheena. Mike Caldwell called this. Sub-Zero team hard-nosed on both sides of the ball. You know, in Seattle, they like to call it the ball, not the disc. And, uh, you know, that's not the team that we're seeing right now. It's not a team that wants to grind it out. 
Sub Zero maybe lacking their identity. Charles Weinberg. Ah, the trash talk. Great really? side for Simon. <laughs> like right here, he's he's engaged. Like he knows it's about to be his turn, and they just start staring at each other for like a split second, and they recognize what they probably do at practice all the time um, is make that throw. Uh, that's not a throw that that defender is necessarily trying to stop. Um, that's kind of like a dang, if they're going to do that to us, like we just got to try to close the window, I guess. Um, they're primarily trying to stop whatever's coming on this side of the field. Um, so. Now, Osgar with an away shot. It's just tough. For Simon tough Nelly. angle. I hate to be the defender personally. Um, so, um, and then we got another here. All right, starting this point here. Park here in San Diego. Beautiful and still for the most part. I've yet to see the wind that was a feature yesterday here today. And this round yesterday, round two in particular, was the peak of the wind. Yeah, I mean, round one was exactly as it was today, comfortable, but uh, so far, those conditions have held. Do you do that favors one of these teams? you think one of these teams might be better in the wind than the other? I think they both love their high degree of difficulty throws and would be a little reticent to let go of them, so... Free chop crossing over to match up with Osgar, but that doesn't. So, really like again, this guy is an extremely good defender. Um, if you guys know Sakai, uh, super good defender, especially deep. I mean, one that throw is like pretty ridiculous. Um, but like this guy's ready for it. Like he's looking back at the disc. He's waiting for that pump. This guy's going for a potential look as well. Um, and they just know where they like to be. They know where their throwers like to throw. Um, and they position themselves in that way. Um, it immediately puts their defender on their back. Um, so it would be a little reticent to let go of them. So free child crossing over to match up with Osgar, but that doesn't prevent Osgar from throwing another. So again, that's just kind of another example. Um, we got a lot of people that love their back end. Um, obviously that's a pretty special throw right there. Um, but we got a lot of people that love that backhand as well. Um, so we got to be ready not to just keep cutting to the same four side. We got to be looking for break throws as well. Anyone got anything for that? Uh, yes. Yeah, was... so... Oh, go yeah. ahead. Files. I was just going to say the, the, the placement of where the cut is, is in the, the exact middle of the field, right? And one of the things that I think a lot of our deep cuts lacked last year and, and have in years past is um, keeping disciplined on maintaining that, that spacing so that wherever that throw goes, you have a really good angle of attack on it. Um, it if you are always going towards whatever cone you have, like that eye contact with the thrower to, so this one would be towards that backhand cone where you're eating up the space, um, really going towards that sideline. That helps the defender. It makes it really hard for us as throwers to put it in a position where you're going to be able to be successful. So the fact that he maintained that middle of the field throughout his cut until he saw where the disc was up, like that's a really important part of this working out for both him and for the throw. It gives a lot of license for the thrower to be able to put it out in front of him, really anywhere on that back line. Yeah, Bowles, quick too, like if the cut starts on the opposite side, like, you know, like siphons off on the way break side, then he can't put it out into that space that he's already occupying too. So like, I just, yeah, I, I, I guess I agree that with like the, you know, dead middle of the field starting, to give both sides as viable options, I suppose. Awesome. That's like pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> they, they practice that exact um, throw. Like I know for a fact in that system, 
the idea is to always make every deep cut vertically, if not slightly angled towards the break side. And the throwers are all trained to like throw big OIs onto that. So that's something that we could definitely take away and bring to our practices. Absolutely. Anyone else? Yeah, we'll watch yeah. it one more time just because I like it. Oh, go ahead. Whoever said that. That was me. I just want to say that, yeah, I'm one of those guys that likes my backhand. Yeah, absolutely. Want to throw it. It would be a little reticent to let go of them. So. Free chop crossing over to match up with Osgar, but that doesn't prevent Osgar from throwing another fading away. All righty. On to the next. All right. A little misdirection. Um, so this next one is a pull play uh, with a lot of moving parts. Um, sometimes, um, like we kind of mentioned earlier, just make the defense make decisions um, and then uh, be decisive and have good timing in the decisions that you make. Um, so keep an angle open, um, like we were just talking about, uh, making sure that you have proper spacing, things like that. Um, but this one's from one sideline to the other, uh, similar to the one that we just watched, um, so. If tuna is one of the healthiest and least super protein gross. to eat, then why are we eating more of it? We'll tell you exactly. Big yikes. <laughs> yeah, that's super gross. sometimes for it to be worth it all it takes is one player to to miscalculate on exactly where that open window Get is a little flood so far, uh, calculations on point and you see this guy in the back Deep and the defense just has no clue what happened. And, uh, one good blow coverage uh, serves another they don't get the score oh. obviously but that no <laughs> um yeah it's pretty box. tragic <laughs> but that lack um, coverage can't keep the disc game back but again, just a little misdirection. Uh, pretty elementary flood comes out of this, um, and they just don't get their matchups. You see, two people went to the one flood, so deep shot from Rhino, and uh, one he just got space to throw. He just missed. Um, so uh, that's something that we're going to be um, definitely looking at for um, our pool plays. Um, getting some misdirection, uh, getting some ISO looks uh, to make the de defense decide. Um, as you can see, they didn't necessarily come down um, in the, the best man-on-man -man defense. They were pretty confused. Uh, maybe they just had a miscommunication uh, when they're counting off on the line. Um, but needless to say, I mean, that should have been a score, um, I would hope. Uh, we would score as well on that. So, um, but again, Open window just a quick pull so play, far, quick flood. Uh, calculations on point. And this guy Four ring of fire. makes that cut, even though he's on that opposite side of the line. He's he not going to just stop that cut. Uh, he's trusting his thrower uh, to be comfortable enough to make that throw um, across basically every defender's head um, and everyone on the field's head. Um, and he just commits to it. Um, so, uh, that's the main thing that I come out of this play with, um, is one misdirection. Um, our pull plays, we're going to have to have some of that. We're going to have to make the defense think, commit to things, um, and try to force a mistake on their end. Um, but two, uh, no matter where you're at on the field, uh, we're going to have to stay engaged with that thrower. We're going to have to trust that our throwers can make those throws and are willing to. Um, and in my opinion, we definitely have people that are willing to shoot. Um, so as a cutter, we just have to be willing to run for it. Um, so again, on exactly where that open window is so far, uh, calculations on point for ring of fire. Deep shot from Rhino and uh, one good blown coverage deserves another. And honestly, like in that, like, the thrower even hesitated on their throw. Like, he could have thrown that a lot sooner because uh, he was open a lot sooner than that. So, 
Uh, anyone have anything on on that? Uh, thrown across the stack, anything like that? One of the things with the pull play is that it looks like ring is actually set up pretty well like at the beginning to try to take away what they're trying to get going right like they have a guy who's trying to take that first under and then they have the guy who actually was defending the person who ended up taking the flood it's just it's to the break side it gets by them and then they don't ever really recover like from the fact that they've got two on that person um when you play it yeah on exactly where that open window is so far uh, calculations on point for ring of fire so that guy underneath him is just a little late reacting to Shot like the cut right. he knows it's going to come and the reason why i say that is because sometimes we'll run pull plays and other teams are going to know what we want to do right it doesn't mean that they're going to be able to stop it like they they get what they want out of this pull play i think um right. you know, a great a great opportunity even though it's kind of tough out of the gate so as a handler with the initiating throw, like definitely making sure you're sticking with that plan and not uh, not blowing up the play too early. Like we, we're gonna put people out there who are gonna be in a position to succeed. Like they're gonna be able to get open on that cut and then we can run the play from there. Right, um, it's, it's trust in us. Um, it's trust in what we've put in place. Um, even when we recognize the defense, um, might be in a good position to take what we're about to do away. Um, we shouldn't chalk it up. We should trust our strengths. We should trust our throwers. We should trust our cutters uh, to do our job. Um, that's the reason why they're out there in the first place. Um, until they shut it down on that play, um, then we need to keep doing what we're doing. So um, anyone else have anything about throwing across the stack, any misdirection, pull plays, things like that? Sweet, sweet. Well, I wanted to make it pretty short and sweet. Um, wasn't as short as I wanted, honestly. I wanted about 10 minutes shorter. Uh, but um, those are just uh, some of the things that um, I think will help us attack the deep space. Um, so hopefully we can transition that in. Um, we'll obviously be uploading this video. Again, like I said before, um, this presentation, we will be putting out uh, ulti plays. Um, and that's going to have not only our pull plays on it, uh, but uh, how we want our end zone to be run, um, how we want uh, handler movement to uh, predominantly be run, um, and things like that. Um, so when that comes out, uh, that's what we're going to be uh, utilizing, and that's what we're going to be looking for at tryouts. Um, and so we're going to be putting that out uh, in our interest form for tryouts as well um, so that people can uh, kind of view that before they go out. Um, but um, that's really all I had. If anyone has any final remarks, feel free to fire them away. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. I'm done. GG. Nice job, Isaiah. Thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Have a good one. You too. Take care. Thanks, Isaiah. Mini Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. I'll be there.